So this video is part two of looking at Jamestown. Previously, we looked at how the English were able to finance it or pay for it and kind of what the position was. Now it's all about hardships and overcoming them. All right, so we can see why did Jamestown struggle and what was it that happened that allowed them to overcome these struggles. Now, right off the bat, this is something we've previously seen. All right, the first video alluded to the fact that the location was terrible. All right, perfect for defense, but if you build next to a swamp, you're going to get mosquitoes, and mosquitoes carry malaria. All right, so Jamestown, while great for defense, was next to this swamp that had malaria carrying mosquitoes in the summertime. The shallow wells, so their source of water, were filled with salt water in the summer, and it led to salt poisoning. And the rivers are going to be filled with garbage and excrement. You heard that correct, garbage and excrement. So dysentery and typhoid fever were also rampant in the summer and also in the fall. Now those diseases, malaria, typhoid, dysentery, if they didn't kill the colonists, it still made the rest very weak and very apathetic, meaning they, they don't really care. To have apathy means you're not really in favor, you're not against, you just, eh, you shrug your shoulders. So they didn't necessarily cultivate enough corn to get them through the winter and the spring. They didn't have the energy, they didn't have the mental toughness, so to speak. And on that note, the settlers themselves did not like hard manual labor. They had an intense distaste for it. And that's predominantly because the settlers were a mix of what we would call gentlemen and the poor. Now the gentlemen, those are the upper class, more wealthier to do individuals. They refused to work because they were exempt in England. They didn't have to work with their hands. They didn't need to get dirty. They're in Jamestown to take advantage of the stock that they've received, all right? They can profit off of any gold that they find. That's why they are there. And those who are poor, because thinking back to economic reasons for colonization, these places are set up as an alternative for the landless poor who need, quote unquote, something to do. They need a reason to live. They were used to begging and stealing to survive. They're not used to working. So you have two groups of people who don't work thrown together and add that to the fact that the poor were forcibly sent to the town. It's very difficult to get people to do something that they don't want to do. That's just a simple fact of life. Now enter Captain John Smith. You, uh, well, you may not be familiar with historically what he looked like. If you've seen the movie Pocahontas, he's depicted as a very noble person, blonde hair, blue eyes. Yes, he did have military experience, hence Captain Smith. But the 26-year-old Smith took over Jamestown, and he ran it like a military camp. Truthfully, he was what they needed to survive. All right, all colonists are going to be forced to work in the fields for six hours per day. We've seen that these two classes aren't necessarily keen on work to begin with, so he's not going to be the most popular guy in Jamestown. Now, the settlers themselves, they had assumed, kind of like the Roanoke settlers, assumed that they would get help from their native neighbors. The settlers assumed that the Poetone would just feed them because they, the English settlers, thought they were superior. Just, they were superior. So we're already seeing kind of the roots of the struggle between European settlers and Native Americans. But the Poetone didn't really have much to spare. Now, the eventual raids of villages, colonists are going to raid a local village, and yeah, if someone comes into your backyard and steals your stuff, you're not going to be happy about it. In fact, you're going to be irate. 
Now, if you've seen the movie Pocahontas, there's this whole love story between John Smith and Pocahontas. She saves him at the end, all that. Right off the bat, historically, when Smith arrived, he was 26. Pocahontas was 10 or 11 years old. So we can throw the love story out the door. Now, the very ending depicts Smith about to be clubbed to death by Chief Poetone and his daughter Pocahontas saves him. There has been a lot of controversy about what happened, did it happen, etc. In 1608, John Smith published an autobiography about his time in Virginia, which is to say his time in Jamestown. He did talk about a ritual occurring between him and Chief Poetone in which he was set free. You know, there was a trade deal that was set up. No mention of Pocahontas. Fast forward 16 years later, 1624, he republishes this autobiography, and then Pocahontas is mentioned. There's this new love story. That's part of the deal. What we think happened, all right, we're pretty sure John Smith was captured by Chief Poetone in an ambush. And within this ceremony that occurred, he ritually adopted John Smith as a subordinate chief because Poetone was leader of the dominant tribe in the area. It was a mock ex uh, execution. He was saved, so to speak, by Pocahontas. But both misunderstood the ramifications of it. Smith continues trying to bully the Poetone into giving the English food. And for his, on his end, Chief Poetone simply thought, okay, we're acknowledging you, John Smith, as leader of your people, but you're subordinate to us. So right off the bat, serious misunderstandings on both sides. Although interestingly enough, Pocahontas will eventually go to England years later. She's going to run into John Smith on the streets of London. When Smith approaches her, she just goes into the nearest door and shuts it in his face. So clearly there was uh, an intense dislike between the two. So that's what the struggles were. Now regarding why Jamestown is permanent, because yeah, it, it's going to take a long time for them to get off the ground. Smith was not a popular guy. People don't like being told what to do. And if you run a settlement like a military camp, you're going to tick a lot of people off. So in October of 1609, he was sent back to England. It's no surprise a starving time will occur after he's sent back. Now, a new governor will arrive in spring of 1611 but he's going to find that the colonists reverted to their old ways of neglecting the fields. Now, this is, this point, private ownership of land permitted. It's bolded. It's got asterisks by it. This is a huge economic incentive and a huge reason why Jamestown will succeed. Remember that back in England, most of the land is owned by a few large landowners. You can't just buy a plot of land. You can't get your acres and call it good. The Virginia Company allows for land to be owned by the colonists instead of the company controlling land. See, a lot of early colonization efforts, like even in French Canada, the company controlled the land, the colonists worked for the colony. Not so. Owning your own land is massive incentive, a huge draw. Now, each settler, provided they can pay for passage, they will get 50 acres of land. Plus, if they can pay for additional relatives and servants, they will then get 50 for each of them. It's called the head right system. You get 50 acres of land for yourself. 50 acres for each head, so to speak, that you can pay for their passage. So if you're a man who has a wife and two children, you get 200 acres of land. And if you pay for the passage of a servant, you get another 50 acres. Now, indentured servants. If you look at any textbook, it'll say that 
who had to work four to seven years to pay off their passage because often you would have settlers pay for servants, but in some instances, the company themselves would pay for the passage of these indentured servants because they needed workers. Usually something would happen to get the full seven years labor out of the indentured servant. All right, something was going to take place. But after seven years, you would get your own 50 acres of land. And we're, we're talking hard, back-breaking labor. Long days in the fields. It is tough and physically demanding. But allowing private property leads to more of an effort to cultivate crops and care for your land. It's, it's the same deal how people talk about home ownership. If you own your land, if you own your home, there is more pride in what your home looks like, what the lawn and the yard looks like. This is a huge incentive and a big reason why Jamestown and other English colonies will succeed.